Hey. Y'all count me in? Or we... <laughs> oh, my bad. Yeah, start, okay. Sh- the count in. I'm sorry. Five. Start the, look, we're, when we start the show, count it. Start. Don't cut this out. <laughs> it's in there. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. We're going to get we gonna get to it. <laughs> All right. In five, four, three. You are listening to the Soul Curators Podcast, where we get into the funk and soul of things. It's all about good conversations about music. So come join us. It's been a long time. We really shouldn't have left you without a dope pod to step to. It's the Soul Curators. We are back in the building. It's your man, Mr. Goodbar here. <laughs> and uh, I am a... Uh, I'm the custodian of this podcast. I'm here to introduce the stars, Christina Curates and Soup's Kitchen. What's going on, everybody? Hello. You? Hello, gentlemen. What's happening? What's happening? And, what's going uh, on, you? Are, that, and that deep baritone voice you hear is uh, none other than the one and only Mr. Al Peters joining us today for a very important conversation. Shout out to Mr. Al Peters. What's going on, boss? What's the word? How y'all feeling? It's all up. All good, man. All good. We're um, here. I know we got a we got a myriad of topics we got to touch on, but before we get started, I want to give our condolences to the family of Rico Wade, an architect Ooh. of Atlanta music, hip hop, R and B, the Dungeon Family Zone, uh, who we love and we lost on uh, April thirteenth, um, twenty twenty four, taking people from us, and he t- they took him. So uh, we definitely want to send our condolences. Fifty two years young, y'all. It's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So, uh, we DF, want, DF, and we DF want to forever. send a rest in peace shout out. DF forever. Yeah, DF forever. So rest in peace to Rico Wade and salute to the Dungeon family, his family, his fans all over the world, everybody who supports him. And yeah. we just want to give him thanks for uh, influencing the culture that we still love and enjoy to this day. And we will continue to. So salute to Mr. Rico Wade. Thanks. Absolutely. Um. Since we were so veering off a little bit, we got a very passionate topic we talked about in our personal conversation that we've talked about a number of times amongst ourselves. We're going to share it with the crowd. We're going to share it with the audience today because I think everybody needs to hear this. And I think it's a it's something that kind of sparked a little bit when we spoke to the amazing Miss France, DJ Francis J. Not so long ago. Go back and listen to that episode. It's important. Uh, and I'm going to actually turn this over to Mr. Al Pete and let him set this off because he. He was so eloquent about the way he brought it in about, you know, our, our, our issues with these artists and how they you know work with us and work with other outlets and, you know, and function with us. Uh, I know I may be putting you on the spot, bro, but I can't I can't say it the way you said it, man. Nah, you good. Uh, I, I do have a question for y'all. Do y'all want me to be uh, cordial with it or do y'all want me to just be straight no. up? Nah, straight nah, fuck up. that. <laughs> straight off. Okay. Um <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely hello to the artists. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Whenever yet you're listening to this, all right? Um, you know, we, we, and I mean soul curators individually and collectively, along with myself, we have these platforms, right? And we really want to, like, play your music, especially if the music is dope, all right? But... You are stopping us from doing that because you're not doing the proper things to make sure that this happens. All right. So we're going to talk about that um, amongst, you know, we're, we're all of us. But this is in love. At the same time, too, it's really to kind of like shake the table because a lot of y'all asses know what y'all are supposed to be doing and y'all don't do it. So I'm going to put the camera back on my my, my crew. And um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to be lightly on that. I'm sure I'm going to get a little more in depth when we had this conversation, but yeah, I had to let one cuss word fly out so I'll let y'all know that it's real. <laughs> oh, so we're not cursing because you know I like. No, to fly I just cuss. I just cuss. Okay, so know, okay. Let, hold on. Let me put the, let me put the camera back on me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all fucking around, man. Y'all, y'all 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 fucking around. Y'all y'all are fucking around. Like y'all be in the studio 
and y'all come out with this music and you don't send it to the media. That is the first stop. The first stop, listen, you want to send it to your best friend, you want to send it to your mama, you want to send it to your uh, your, your daughters and, and sons so they can play it for their friends, that's fine. But from a professional standpoint, I need y'all ass to send it to the people, to the media people, and we are definitely included as media. Back, back to y'all, SQ. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's all facts. But we can let's let's get let's get into the depths of it. Let's 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 get into the depths of it because I'm I'm gonna say more on so it let's go, with so, my depths. But so, Christina, what's your thoughts on what's your thoughts on this topic, Christina? Well, I think that um, the media, whether they're big or small, should at least get some sort of pack. I mean, of course, I'm not privy on all the logistics and how all that works. But I know that I have received some um, music, new music from artists. And I'm talking about like the description of each song. We're talking about like the videos that may have already come out and just the different versions of the songs and the albums. And I'm thinking like, wow, this is pretty dope. So I've had, a, so far I've had about two or three of those, but I'm thinking about the amount of music that, have, that has come out that I support, that we support that it's like, okay, y'all need to kind of look at those platforms like ours that may not be as big as Essence or Soul Tracks or whatever, you know, whatever of other media platforms there are. And I think that we could reach a lot of people amongst ourselves. So I piggyback on what you said in terms of just being able to share the music for the people for the, for the little people, <laughs> I say little, but you guys know what I mean in terms of our platforms right now. I know we will be bigger, but, you know, holla at us. That's facts. All facts. <clears throat> All facts. I agree. I agree. That was That's a cordial way of saying it. That was, that was, that was, cool. I mean, listen, we appreciate that. That was, that was cordial, but. <laughs> let's, 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 get, let's get ugly. Who's who's going to who's going to do a super Mister? Because I, I I set the platform. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna probably get ugly, but I know I agree 100 percent that artists should be sending us they shit. And a, a lot of the reason why they don't is because we're not as popular as we should be, right? Like we don't have the thousands of followers, and we don't have we don't have a glitz and glamour behind what we do we're true to what we do we are honest about what we do we enjoy what we do so they don't see it because we don't have the numbers now i'm just getting that part out of the way because i know that's going to be the pushback when people say well how many followers y'all got how like i don't think that should matter um because my my whole thing is like artists they ignore the fuck out of us. You know what I'm saying? I, so I just I just posted some shit on Twitter. Sir, Sir sent some shit out and he was like, I wish people would listen to my music the way they like like this post or some shit like that. And I was on, like, what? we do we just ignore I, the shit. I, I, I saw that. I was sir, like, just, like you, Sir, Sir said that? Yeah, yeah. Sir said it. So I'm like. I'm like you just y'all ignore the little people. The little people are the ones who enjoy your music, who who are listening to your music without asking you for a penny, without asking you for anything. They just want to hear the good music. And what happens is we get ignored because how many followers we have? How many how many listens do we have? How many of these things? But if if the artists, these bigger artists that want to get those that if they they want our audience too, like if they want to get these real artists that or I'm sorry, real listeners that are gonna purchase their merch, that are gonna show up to their concerts, they have to put their engagement in us. Like we right here, like we for free. Like we're not asking for shit. We just asking for the music. We're not asking for nothing else. I'm not asking you to post shit. I'm not asking you to do nothing. Sorry about that. My bad, my bad. So, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Goodbye, real quick, real quick. Um, So, 
when they send their, I mean, it's possible when they send their music to, to the big people, right? The big people, these big people don't be playing their shit either. So, I mean, it's almost right. like, what, like, what, 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 what's, what's the deal? Like, so you, you waiting for your shit to get played? You taking a chance, regardless of whether it's big or small, that people are gonna play your music. And like you said, I mean, it's such a things are so crazy now. Like play the music how? Play it on um, what is it? XM? Not XM. What is the series? Series XM. Yeah, series yeah, XM. I, mean, that's, that's, I know that's not the only form of radio. There's so many different radio stations, but it's just like they probably think, okay, I'm, I'm looking for my streams on you know, Spotify or on Tidal and on Apple Music or whatever to go up. So, yeah. I, but I, here's the other part that I, I kind of know that so the artist might not say anything like this, but the management will. The management will say, well, we send artist packs to DJ pools. Are you subscribed to DJ pool? So they're going to say that shit. And so, like, that's going to be their pushback on why we don't get the music is because they put it in the DJ pool. Well, everybody has access to it. It's in the DJ pool. Mm-hmm. That's not true. Like, if you don't pay, if you don't pay top dollar in the DJ pool, you don't get all the, you don't get that music. You get the shit that the nigga in the basement just put in the DJ pool. You're not getting you're not getting the top shit unless you paying top dollar for it. Like, I don't understand that. Like I, that is stupid. Like, I don't. good ball. Can I say one more thing before we go to you? Absolutely. Listen, Absolutely. the DJ pool shit, like that's all fine to Danny, but fuck all that. Like I'm in the communication world times a million. You should, you should be hitting up every angle of every type of communication. So if a motherfucker is hitting you up via email, you send that pack to them, period. Like, if, I mean, if you want to do research or not, you send that shit. If you got to send it through snail mail, send that shit. Put it in DJ boo, uh, in, in DJ um, pools, that's fine. But even with that, you still got to, some of these pools, you got to prove that you're a DJ and you got to pay for it. Who has the money to pay for it if I just want the, the damn song and the damn picture so I could do a write-up on you and put your song on the damn radio? Like, to, just, to expose you to any type of demographic or whatever the case may be. So it's like, that manager shit, and another thing on that manager shit, I need you to get tapped into your artist. Like, if your artist is 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 wanting to be out there like that or need to be te- touching the people in, in, in that regards, then you need to be making a system or a, or a strategic plan for that shit to get out to people. Like, that. Could, that's... I don't buy that shit. I fucking don't buy that shit. That, that whole DJ pool shit, fuck all that. If I'm hitting you up directly and it don't matter if my shit say 600 followers or 10,000 followers, if you see that I have a consistent shit where I'm doing a radio show and you can go specifically and see that I'm doing this show, send me the goddamn music, period. Why, how you gonna, how you gonna be selective on fucking music like that? Like, a DJ pool? Man, fuck all that. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. all that. Send the fuck, send, send me the damn music and quit playing. So can I can I play devil's advocate? Just me thinking in the back in the back of my mind about what I've seen from the folks that have sent their packs or whatever it's called. Do you think that there are some artists, whether big or small, probably smaller ones, that may not know how to send a pack? Uh, fair no. enough. So put it together, make, maybe. I don't know. Fair, fair enough. You, fair enough. Make music. If you can make music and you know how to go to a fucking studio, you know how to use a fucking internet, like the the email. Like, it's not that hard. This but even with that, that but even with that soup, like when you're making the music, you got to be thinking about how this shit get dis- dis- distributed. Like, you can't possibly go in there and make a dope ass song and then be like, oh, well, I'm just gonna send this to my mom and and then and expect for a hundred thousand people to do it. Like you. It's an intention in your head. Like these artists, we watch all these shows all the time. We see these interviews all the time. We was coming up. We was watching MTV Rap City. This and the third. So it's like the the, the platform was there to know how to do it. But I mean, I get it. I get it. Good boy. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to hog all this up, but <laughs> I, but that, I mean that's a good counter because I do try to walk into situations thinking maybe this person doesn't know. 
So I come no. from I come from grace, and I will I, I will explain it. But after a while, I'm like, this person cannot be your manager, or you. I have to question your artistry, or question the fact that you ain't got no artist development to understand that I have a platform that plays music. Send me your shit. <laughs> Period. Like I mean. I get the counteract. I get the counteract. But goddamn, I sometimes I just be like, this is some bullshit. I, All right, I'm done. Go Goodbye. Out. Go for it. I feel like I'm taking over the show. <laughs> nah, nah. I, I, we needed this. We need this. And I got to say, I love everything about this conversation. And I'm glad that he be having it with you all. So with in the spirit of love, I'm going to start with love. So I want to show love to the artists who have been consistent when sending all of us collectively and individually, their music when it comes out. I'm going to shout out Bobby Earth. I'm going to shout out Cy Smith. I'm going to shout out Fonte, who have sent us individual packs on the humble, text it to you, email it to you. Hey, I got something in the box for you. Artists like those who have been consistent with showing us love. I, I, I love and appreciate that. You are you are the example that we are referring to of how to do this shit. Okay? Now, no need to reiterate what my family has been saying. Everything they say, I, st- I stand on it as if I said it. I stand 10 toes with what everybody has said so far. I'm going to add this element to it. My issue is for the artists who know full well that we exist as a collective and as individuals that know us, that know who we are, that know what we do, that know how we <laughs> represent their music, and they still don't fucking send us the fucking music even after we ask them to their fucking faces to send us the music. That's that's where I have the biggest issue. I feel like you are responsible for what you know. If you like like the like the Bible says, like our parents have told us, like our grandparents have told us, if you know better, do better. I can't hold you responsible if you don't know. I'm that's where Mr. Al Pete's grace comes in. If you don't know, cool. Let me give you an opportunity to know about that. Now that you know and you do know it. If you've liked, you've liked our posts, you've responded to us tagging you and shit when we say, hey, we played this many hours of music. In this hour, we play X, Y, and Z artists, X, Y, and Z artists, and your name is on that list. You've seen it, and you've even liked the posts. So when we reach out to you on The Humble, and please understand to all of our listeners, we have been consistent with connecting to these artists, just like we ask y'all to do. We'll go in the inbox and be like, hey, we love what you're doing shoot us whatever we'll be happy that we want to premiere it here we got this you know we got an artist that would love to hear it in our city and you know we are and, and are and be very clear i'm gonna talk our shit real quick we are all centrally located where we're from but our audience is all over the world that's you may not see it but our audiences that's- are all over the fucking world if you don't believe me look at last year when we started this podcast and see how far we reached you know what I'm saying? So we got people outside our area. I'm gonna talk my shit. So and then don't also minimize shout out us. To- right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say, don't minimize us to what you think you see on social media. The reach for these for this podcast and for the members of said podcast and the network with which it's representing is larger than what you're looking at. So you're omitting yourself an opportunity to you have a one shop stop to have this music dispersed four different ways. So you're doing mm-hmm. yourself a disservice by not reaching out and following up with us, especially when we reach out. Because we're not too big to reach out. We have reached out and to you artists who have we have reached out to and y'all ghosted us, fuck y'all. And don't come back <laughs> when, it, when the shit get popping. Because I don't appreciate that. We don't have to support you motherfuckers. It's a thousand artists that's waiting to get some shots. And we decided to select you to support and you opted to just ghost us when we set aside our time away from our families away from our lives to spend some time to talk to your nasty ass and you just left oh us hanging my God. Don't, oh don't, my God. don't expect to hear from us no more don't expect to hear from us no more and when the shit get popping and you come reaching back out to us out of grace we may we may have evolved to actually open our doors up to you again but don't expect the energy we were going to give you at first because we come with love and we are That's not fair. too small for nobody. If Cy yeah. Smith can, if Cy Smith can st- sit here with us, if B. My Fiasco can sit here with us, if DJ Francis J can sit here with us, 
all the artists who have been here and visited with us, if they can do it, you can. You ain't too Shout big for, to none of, for none of that shit. Shout Tamisha out to Wade. Tamisha. If you, right. Tamisha Wade, and also, you can sit with, if they can sit with us, you can too. You ain't too big to sit with us just because right. we ain't fucking Charlemagne. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and and shout out, shout out to Misha from the, all the way, all the way in Finland for sending his music to us, recognizing that okay, I see that I, you know these are some people that are supporting. Shout out to Misha. Misha, and Don't then you- on top of that, to add add extra to that, we're gonna be talking to Misha soon too. Misha's in fucking Finland. And he's Make taking time out to set time for us, man. We got a hey, man. We got people. We got we got people around our block that can't even send us a goddamn email. We we, we about to talk to some. Fin- we talk about to talk to Finland. So I wanted to Crazy. I, when you when you when Good Bar when you was talking about there is technically four of four things that they can. The music is technically five. Like we all have our own individual, and then the soul curators that makes five. So, you're right. You're right. My well, bad. if you want to, I mean, I went to, to, to public school. I went to public nah, school. No, 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 no. That <laughs> listen. That's. I mean, hell, that technically that's six. I mean, you got Chris and the Curate show. You got Good Bar show. You got Soups. That's three. You got Soul Curators. That's four. You got the Groove Suite. That's five. You got NPN. That's six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you got Cubicle Music Mondays. That's seven. You got uh, oh. the Neighborhood Show. That's eight. That's that like one stop shop. Same one. That's crazy. And wait, wait, like and hey, round of applause, and stadium applause this. for all of this. Quit playing with us. And bust this. You name drop six or seven entities. How many emails they need? One. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I but but again, like I said, be it. <laughs> Uh, that too, facts. <laughs> facts. We rocking with you. We rocking we, with you. We got a, we got a, we got a new puppy, and I'll eat right now. Damn, that sound like a. That, that ain't no like puppy. A, that's a, a, that's a man. Oh, man. <laughs> He's a righty corso. Hold on. <laughs> nah, but to, to, nah, but to the point, like, like it's just, it gets to the point where it's like disrespectful because. It would be different, like I said, if it's not some. If you have no idea we exist, I, I can't be mad at you for that. I can only be like, I don't know how you don't know what al- algorithm is playing your music when you get tagged on it. But that's neither here nor there. But mm-hmm. I only hold you responsible for it if you know it's there. If if you've if you've interacted with us online or in person or what have you, either collectively or separately, and you know when when we sit down and talk, we are to the point where I know. I say, hey, you know, here's my show to remedy. I'm connected with the soul curators and NPN network. Mm-hmm. We got, you know, I got, I can get your music dispersed pretty much all over the country, not just with mm-hmm. my little show on Houston. There's people everywhere I've connected with that can get, I can, you know what I'm saying, get your music to. If right. you opt not take that opportunity, or if you lie and say, nah, I'm gonna get you, I got you, I'm gonna send it to the, and you never do, like, why, why, why would you not, why would you miss an opportunity to have support? I don't understand mm-hmm. that. I don't but understand that, it. That's that ego of the artist of like, I'm I'm going where the numbers are. Like, a artist, the, the artist mindset is I'm going where I see numbers. I'm going where I see the more interactions. If, if there's more interactions over over there, if there if there's more, if there's a million listeners and there's a possibility they're going to get a couple of those listeners or whatever, they're going to go there instead of instead of the engagement of the true listeners like we're i don't know i every everybody's looking for that viral moment now like they're not they're not looking for true engagement they're just looking to make a quick viral moment and then do whatever after that a, a lot of artists aren't they're not really trying to I, they're, they're not really trying to to work for real like they really don't want to they they don't want to deal with us because they feel like they got to put too much work in when you don't like you uh, just send the music we'll, we we we're not we're not the only people you're asking we're at you know 
it's plenty of people that you can send the music to and you can still send it to those big platforms, but you're going to get more work out of the little independent podcasts and the little that you're going to get from those big things. Like you might not hear your music get played until it goes viral. Now, all of a sudden, now it's getting played on shade four or five. Now it's getting played on, on hot 97. Now it's getting after, after it then went viral on TikTok and all this type of stuff. When, the person that's doing a podcast in a living room been playing your shit all all this time and created a small little fan base of your song. Like, I, I, I don't know. For y'all, every time we post a playlist, I guarantee there's somebody in the comments talking about, man, I got hit from this artist because of your playlist. Like, we, uh-huh. I, I guarantee we see this all the time. Yeah. And it's like... Okay, that's one person, but that one person is talking to another person. It's just, it's just, it just, it's, it's a snowball effect. But the artists don't, they don't give a shit. Um, yeah. I'm, I just, well, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Um, to your point, I feel like um, um, people need to define what what success is. Um, so if your success. I really feel like if people thought about the success that they that they true that that they can uh hold on to, like that they that they can stand, um, I guarantee you it would be a different story because um having a thousand followers that will invest twenty five dollars a month into you is way way better than having a hundred thousand and you get you know a uh, uh a dollar here, a dollar there, this and the third. So, and I'm just using that as, as an example because I, I don't think a lot of these artists understand what success is in their books. So, a lot of people just feel like, oh, I just got to shoot for the stars and I got to do that. And it's like, nah, if, if you define what your goals are, maybe you don't need to be shooting for the stars and chasing the algorithms and et cetera, et cetera, whatever. So, I think that's one of the few things that could be cured. So people can understand that. And I feel like if people thought about that, maybe they'd be like, well, you know what? Mm, I might need to start at the grassroots of things. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. I, and, a, and a lot of these celebrities be doing grassroots shit. Think about it. A lot of artists, a lot of artists that are big, sometimes they'll go to the smaller venues to be trying music out or just get into the experimentation part. So, But they still mm-hmm. understand, like, let me go back to the grassroots of it. A lot of these people go back to their poetry spots. <laughs> like, they'll jump on a microphone as if they put their name on a list just to keep it real, so to say. But, I mean, they understand that factor. And I feel like a lot of these artists don't take the time to think about those components on top of, like, the obvious shit, i.e. running for numbers right. and all that stuff. So, Right, right. Well, that's a great segue to our next topic. Hold on, Christina. Before we switch topics, uh, we have to be, uh, to close this out properly, we have to give them an opportunity to understand what we expect from them now that we've told them what they aren't doing. So, I'm, I'll be, you can jump in with me. I'm going to start with, and you probably have already stated this, and you'll be able to state it a little bit more eloquently than I can. What we're asking for is your pack. In your pack, you can include the original version of the song, the radio version of the song, which would mean clean, so we can play it on the radio, the instrumental, the acapella if you want. You can include a video if you got it. You can include the producer credits. You might even, how about this, for extra credit, you can even include a drop to the platform that you're sending it to so that when they play your song, you can have a drop introduce the song properly. You anybody want to add anything to that? <laughs> now you asking for too much. The artist got to do extra work now. <laughs> I mean, picture that. Picture that. <laughs> isn't, nah, it, I, isn't it professionally called? A, isn't it professionally called like an EPK? Am I correct or am I wrong? The no, EPK. Uh, EPK. Yep. EP, I mean, it, you need to have an EPK anyway. Like as, as far as as far as an artist, you just need to have an EPK. Your EPK includes all of that. So you should create an EPK when you have a, a single uh, a album or whatever the case. I mean, you should have a standard EPK and just update it. It, sh- it should be like a living document. So when you release a song, all you got to do is just put the song in the EPK in the folder, send it as a zip, and then go from there. 
Um, mm. So everybody should have an EPK, and it and this is for any type of creator, business owner, all that stuff. You need to have a, a you know, an EPK. And so, mm. what you can do with that EPK uh, to all artists, grab your pen or grab your phone. You can send that EPK to the Soul Curators at Gmail. That's T H E S O U L Q U R A T O R S at Gmail dot com. You can. Pause the podcast, scroll it back about 15 seconds if you didn't catch that the first time. If you need it again, you can also go to Soul Curators uh, on Instagram and we will give it to you there. And that way, and that's like, and you can, and, and by sending that one email, you can disperse your music and your product over six or seven platforms. That's, that's facts. And even, and, and I know we're going to move to the next topic, but um, I actually did a podcast on Clivage. Clivage's podcast which is my personal podcast, um, I think two episodes ago, I talked to the artist. It's called Dear Artist. I'll put it in the in the, um, in the notes um, that people can listen to it. But I gave my my breakdown of like how to send it, what to send, what to think about when to send it, all that stuff. So I'll definitely uh, attach that to our notes on this. Where can they where can they hear that podcast, Mr. Al Pete? Uh, Mr. Al Pete dot com forward slash Clear Visions podcast. I never oh. promote it. I, I never promote. It. I just be throwing that episode. So whoever signed up, they listen to it. But I'll extend. I'll definitely promote that part for, so for the sake of this conversation for sure. Boom. Sweet, cool beats. We uh, next co- topic is Drake, right? <laughs> 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 I'll be out the back and I'm just playing. <laughs> <sighs> Get that shit out of the way. <laughs> hey, look, man, I, we got to talk about it. It's the most popular thing yeah. going on right now. Kendrick, yeah. Kendrick did his thing on on uh, Euphoria. Is it Euphoria? That's what it's called? Yeah. 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 Every, yeah. every pod talking about it, so we got to do it. So yeah, that's um, I don't know. Kendrick is uh, Kendrick is winning. Oh, do we need to count in? We, I think we need to count in again. No, 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 no we good. We rolling. We still rolling. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right. I mean, no, right, I'm gonna cut it out. On you. Oh, me? <laughs> yeah, okay. What, what, what you want to talk about? Well, we are going to discuss. Oh no, I'm sorry. You guys are going to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> rap. <laughs> rap battle, rap this. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> I had a conversation today in in my one of my classes, and this one of my students loves Drake. So I was like, "What's up with your boy?" And he looked at me like, "What is she talking about?" And so it was like Drake, and then he was like, "Miss Six, you heard it?" And you're like, "Yes, I heard it." So we, I said, you guys need to do a really a. Uh, you need to dive deep into like the history of rap battle and you know hip hop because this is it's 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 good it's good for the culture yes so that's my mm. piece it's good for the culture that but it excellent. ain't it ain't it ain't that like it's yeah yeah it ain't it, we ain't really got to we ain't got to no Vaseline we ain't that's got what to I'm eat. That's why I said they need to go back and do some history on like real, you know, rap battles and, and dissing and stuff. Or is it I mean, called a rap battle I, or is it just a diss? Just beef. Call it diss. a battle. It's a battle. Yeah. yeah okay. Beef, okay. Yeah. <laughs> just making sure I'm using the right, you know, hip hop terms. <laughs> I think what's happening is like um, it's kind of drawing a line in the sand uh, from people because there's two different styles of battling. There may mm-hmm. be more than two, but I mean this this is this is kind of showcasing two two different styles of battling. And I'm sure there are more styles, but this particular one is where you have someone who is braggadocious, boasting, and insulting. And then you have someone else who's strategic, giving out facts, twisting them up and making them uh Making them sound salacious if they're not already salacious, and also being very clever with the wordplay, and hitting you with like, uh, I'm going to borrow my son's uh, 
description of it because I listened to, I listened to what he said on Twitter. It's like grown man bars versus somebody just shooting insults. And grown man bars seem to hurt people more than just insults. Because grown man bars are talking about things that you you when when you turn the music off, you still got to look in the mirror and deal with that. Mm-hmm. And that's that's hard to that's hard to kind of kind of get over. So with Kendrick with Kendrick and Drake I have to be honest and say I'm I'm not disappointed with a lot of it. Uh, I think I expected what I got from Drake and I expected what I got from Kendrick. So I'm mm-hmm. not disappointed pretty much either way. Um, if I was to say who I think is actually hitting hitting the target as far as this battle supremacy, I think right now it's Kendrick's to lose because... He's, I mean, that last song he did is really incredible. And honestly, the like that song is still more jamming than all the other songs that has come out since then. All right, that's fact. I mean, but the only, the, the issue with that, we're saying Kendrick is winning because we understand the lyricism. We understand the the, the entendres. We understand the, the sample. Like using, there's two samples that he used. He used a sample from The Wiz and he used the Teddy Pentagram sample. If you if you understand Teddy Pendergrass, you know okay he started out being a hot guy, got in a car accident, ended up being wheelchair Teddy. All oh, right, so, wheelchair Jimmy, like it's just it's crazy. You know? <laughs> it's so, so crazy. You, know what I'm so you got you got that part of it, Dang. and then when you look at the Wiz, you know if I'm, you, if, I'm quite sure all of us grew up watching the Wiz. The Wiz is a is a black household staple. So when you watch the Wiz and you watch that that uh the the dance scene where they was out there and every they were changing clothes, it was all mm-hmm. fake. Like they just changed with the times, right? So Drake changes with the time. And at the end of it all, I'm a I'm a fake, I'm a phony, right? And then you turn you reverse that, and that's what's being said. I'm a phony, I'm fake, or whatever. I forgot how it goes, but it's it's Richard Pryor saying I'm fake. So that's part of it. And it's like, okay, we understand it. But because I don't want to say like Drake's fans were basement kid classes, like or basement cat kid, they 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 took classes in the basement. That's what I'm trying to get to. But um <laughs> Because <laughs> they, a, a lot of it, they don't really, they're not understanding, they're not understanding it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just going over their head. Like I had to think too hard about this shit. So hey, all they want to do, all they want to do is dance off it. If it, if if, yeah. if, if, if the yeah. if the beef ain't, uh, if the beat ain't good for the beef, then they, you know, they don't want to hear. It. They just want to dance but off the, it. The Kendrick, the Kendrick beat is is dope. It's, it's got the bass to it. You know, you can you can listen to it. it. It's six minutes long, but it don't even feel like it's six minutes. Like, you know, the you know the ironic thing about the whole thing though, if Kendrick was dissing somebody other than Drake, Drake would love that song because Drake <laughs> knows what exa- he knows everything about. He's he's one of those kids like us who pick up on all of that. So if it wasn't about him, he would be like, man, this is one of the greatest disses ever. Like. And that's probably what's going to piss him off most because it's like, I don't want to like this shit because he's roasting me, but damn, this nigga is really kind of spitting right now. <laughs> hey, the worst part on that disc is he called that nigga Debbie in a, in a, in oh. a way. Like, nigga, you don't know about waking your kid up. You don't know about putting your kid to sleep. You don't know about praying with your kid. Like, bruh. <laughs> like, you laid out this nigga's life. <laughs> like, we just... That that's oh, that's crazy. That's the, to, to me. So, that's the crazy part. So prepare to see Adonis everywhere with Drake. Adonis is <laughs> gonna be strapped to that nigga's chest. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he have him on one of his um? Uh, he had him on his last album. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's the sport in it. And I think that with the way the world is now, it's like everything is just like overly sensitive. I've seen things about um, making fun of or making a mockery of him being a mixed race. I've seen all kinds of things. I'm like, goodness grief. 
it's just a diss you know can we just let it live as it is you know i, I don't man. know it's just like a lot of a lot of people a lot of people have forgot how this rap shit go man like exactly like <laughs> listen i you know i'm I try to be, you know, when it kind of just rap shit, you know, I don't too much care for the uh, for the beefs or whatever. But I understand how it how it exists in the culture, and right. I do know that ain't ain't no there's no holes bars with that shit. And if you gonna go into that, if you gonna go into a battle or go into it, you better not miss. You know what I'm saying? It's just that it's just that simple. So it's like all bets are off. You and know, it also makes I, you wonder how many how many people I'm oh, I'm sorry not to cut you off. You I also no, wonder how many people have actually seen like a face to face rap battle. You know how they you know they I, I don't think they have many. Well, they probably do have them underground, and we just don't know about it. Like in Atlanta and different stuff. But like have have these kids have these Drake fans or just people in general who are new to hip hop have actually seen a rap battle and seen how vicious it could be. No, you know? they, no, because you know that that whatever it's called the URL, whatever that shit is, the rap league or whatever that shit, or whatever they call it, that's I mean that's on Twitter. Like people is going is viral. They have viral moments and shit like that. Um, but they don't. It's a lot of that shit go over people's head, and they they think piece everything. Like everything is fucking think piece. Like you know the whole the whole shit about. Uh, what Kendrick said about Drake being black enough, like they they they're dissecting that, oh, like to the, oh his mom is white. It just is no. Is it, you can be black, but you do, you may not be part of the culture. Like it's plenty of it's it's plenty of niggas like that that just they're a black, but they just they black as I am or blacker, and they just not a part of the culture because it's certain shit they just didn't grow up with. Yeah. Along like, those lines, soup. Along those lines, soup. I saw something that people misread a lot, and I know we're we our ears are different, and we heard it completely different than what other people said. When Kendrick said, "I don't think you like women," a lot of people misread that as him calling Drake gay. No, what no. he's saying is, you can like having sex with women and not like women as people. Mm-hmm. And it's clear by the way that you handle certain women. There's a lot of men, and that I don't think that was just to Drake. There are so many men that we know personally, or that we've met or been around personally, <clears throat> that love sex with women, but they don't like women mm-hmm. because they can't exist in a space with them unless there's something sexual going on. And I think mm-hmm. that's kind of what he's saying about Drake. I mean, because if you think about it, there's a history of Drake dissing women in rap. Which is why Did, Megan started off 2024 dissing him. Yes. Dis, dissing women, but also he doesn't deal with women. He deals with young women, like young, young women. So it's like, I don't wanna I don't wanna cute like I don't wanna say he's dealing with young girls or anything like that, but there's allegations of him, you know, texting a 14 year old, six or six, whatever. But I don't know all of that, the ins and outs. I just know like from what I can see. Is he rather deal with an 18, 19 year old or a 20 year old? The man almost 40, he's about 40 years old, almost 40 years old. And he doesn't deal with anybody in that age range. He deals with people that's been, that grew up to him, and like idolized him. And now, you know, they're 18 and okay, I'm going to do anything. So he can manipulate them. You know, he can't manipulate a grown woman. He can manipulate a, a young, fresh, adult woman but he can't you can't do that with a with a with a full grown woman so that when when you say he doesn't like women i that's what i got from it is like he doesn't he can't deal with a grown woman so mm. so he out here on some I, he, I, he, he out here on some Marcus Houston shit pretty much yeah. oh, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's it's also I'm interested to see how the culture will respond to that disc because I think there's there's elements of it that is bigger than being attacking at Drake as far mm-hmm. as things in the culture that we've all kind of not really paid much much attention to or brought light to as far as how culture and race work with hip hop and mm-hmm. like Soup said so eloquently just because you skin folk don't mean you can folk like That's you sick. can you can be black but not be of the culture. 
and mm-hmm. I don't think it has anything to do with Drake Drake being biracial. I think it has to do with the fact that he turns on his race card when it's advantageous for him, and he turns mm-hmm. it off when he doesn't he doesn't need it. And I think that's something that silently people have been noticing throughout the majority of his career. And we've been saying it in circles like this, but this is the first time somebody really said it on wax. And it's like, what you going to say? I mean, first you was, you was reggaeton, then you was Jamaican, then you got dreads and then you did, you know, it's like you, you're a chameleon. Like what's, what's your culture? Maybe he tried to maybe he, Maybe he, devil's advocate, because I don't know him from rat's ass, but I mean, maybe he is still trying to figure out where he fits in whatever culture that he's, you know, his his mother is Canadian, father is from Canada also? Black. No, black. he's black. Well, he's from... Well, he's Memphis. black. He's from huh? Memphis, I think, right? Memphis? His dad's from Memphis. Okay. Yeah. So Memphis. So, I mean... Maybe his, uncle, still his uncle is uh famous too. Like he, his uncle is in a famous group. I forgot. I think. Del- Chris, I think. I think Del- Christina, what you're saying is spot on. But I think the problem is, is that it just every time he switches his style, it aligns with whatever's popular at the time. So it feels <laughs> like it's disingenuous. Right. Like so if, when that- when it was. Is that any different from Music Soul Child switching up his style of music? I mean, the style of music, the different styles of music. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, that's just a question that no, I have. Like, I see where you're going. I see where you're going. Where you're going is a good question. It's a great yeah. question that you ask. Yeah, so to differentiate question. between the two, to differentiate between the two, Music Soul Child is experimenting with music that is part of the culture that he grew up in so he Mm -hmm. may rap sometimes he may sing but that's something that he's experienced as who he is from where he's from with drake i think and this is speculatory this is not something i know it's fact but from what i can tell whatever is actually going to because remember drake started his career doing a full cosplay of fonte i think that's not even debatable so it's whatever is whatever is actually like you can see it whatever is going to be the next move for culture he's going to find a way to adapt himself with it like for instance he got popular imitating Migos that's when he really blew when he started rocking he started rapping alongside Migos he was already in the underground circles we knew who he was but once he started rapping with Migos and stopped rapping with Ninth Wonder and with uh, the the uh, with the rappers that he was growing up with, he switched it up, and it's like he changes his, his outlook, his style, everything changes with whatever he's trying to do, and he, he has a right to do that. He he went the rapper boot camp, and then we got the this is the Drake that we got. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What I was saying, what I was gonna say about music, soul child, that nigga rap once. And he ain't done that shit since. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> He's made great music. His new, his new, the album he got with Hit Boy is an incredible album. And I think yes, he found is. he was able he found his mix. He was able to have the hip hop element, but he was also he was also able to have his strongest. Which is his vocals. He's very strong. He's a strong vocalist. He's a strong songwriter. He was able to put. <laughs> don't. We're not. We're not gonna have this music soul child slander today. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say a word. He. I. He is, Your face. I know. He is. I, I like. You know. I like music soul child. Also, I do. I like his music. I definitely uh, like his music. For sure. A, and I. I gotta. I gotta I gotta make a meme out of that. I gotta make a meme out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I did say, like this last album with Hit Boy. However, have you ever heard of, have you ever heard Music Soul Child Live? I no, I, I okay. so I wasn't <laughs> she wasn't talking about that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That's all. Okay. So now let's go ahead and say <laughs> Well, well, Christina, well, what was your music soul child live experience like? No, 
We want these what? niggas to send us music. We <laughs> just saying, yo, send us music. <laughs> Is this soups talking? Hold on, let me back up a little bit. Is that soups? <laughs> Y'all already know. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Music God. Soul Child, you are welcome on the Soul Curators <laughs> podcast. We, you are, mm. we are fans of your music. Music Soul Child. Absolutely. Okay. So since we talk about music, Absolutely. let's segue to what we have been, what has been in our ear the last couple of weeks slash, I guess, yeah, last couple of weeks since we last met with DJ Francis J. Um, mm. Start with Soup's Kitchen. <laughs> Why did I start? No, we're going to start with you because you... <laughs> you, just, you just... <laughs> Oh my God! He just skipped past your little thing with music. He just no. I just said it. I, what did I say? I, okay, I didn't talk about it because we we not gonna talk about it. We'll save that for another time off off air. <laughs> but, when we do, you know. when we when we when we when we do our greatest hits of the Soul Curators podcast for 2024, that second when you. <laughs> We have to include that. That was the greatest. Well, my look, the look I had on my face. Oh, it was it was so perfect. Oh, it was so perfect. I need everybody to don't listen. If you are a listener of Soul Curators podcast, stop right now and go to the YouTube and watch this episode. <laughs> you, just watch the episode. Damn the audio. Watch it. Hey, I'm, yeah, and I, I, I don't know the, the, that playback gonna look kind of fresh too, because I was going back and forth on y'all too, like, oh, you, was, bro, you, was, you was doing your damn thing, you was doing your thing. I see you, you, I saw you. Please understand, I saw you. Thank you. And I have, that was hard. I have to, I have to watch my my facial expressions. My kids say it all the time about do you, it's all in your eyes and your facial expressions when you don't want to say what you really want to say. But anyway, so in terms of what I've been listening to. Um, Sebastian Michael brought, I mean, uh, released like a three track, I guess it's an EP or three songs, Paradigm Chef. And my favorite song from there is with Ima V, Ima V, Ima V, Ima V. Nothing Compares is really good, but it's really good. The song, all three songs are really good. Yeah, that's what I thought you was going to say. I thought you was going to say Security Code with India Sean. I don't know if it's on that project or not, but I like that. Um, no, it's from Sebastian. Sure. Yeah, it's Sebastian Michael. It's a song called Security Code. It's the remix featuring Andy Sean. Oh, really? It's yeah. 2023, so it may be a little late. It's a 2023, yeah, okay. but yeah, but I'm with you on that. Because I haven't heard that either. I need you need to send me that one because I haven't heard that. I got you. I, I don't know how I, got I missed you. it. I get it over to you. <laughs> and I then you. also, you'll have it. Okay, thank you. Recently, I have uh, just discovered by way of Neo Soul Cafe. Somebody posted it in the Neo Soul Cafe group. Uh, Navy, it's a it's a young lady out of Burundi, Africa. Her name is Navy, and she has an EP with two other artists that are from her area called Closer, and it is is real vibey. So I have others, but those are my two. Is it N-A-V-I or N-A-V-E or something like that? It's N-N-A-V-Y. Oh, I've heard of them. Because uh, the way you spell it now, I remember it. It's N-N-A-V-Y. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. okay. It's, a really good, it's a really good EP. Real vibey. It's, you know, my kind of music. She got her colors. Uh-huh. So, yeah, oh, she yes, yeah, she does. So I mean, if I have more, if you know, but I, I want to save some of the ones that I know that we kind of may have in common, and just say, yeah, I agree with that as well. <laughs> what Wait, was the like, name of her EP again? Closer. Okay. And it's with, okay. Yes, it's with uh, Karen. I think her name is Karen. She spells it K A R U N, and then Hendrix Sam is a guy. And there's one other person. I think it's in Nasky. But it's four people, but it's pretty cool. I think they're all out of. They might all be out of Africa, but I'm not quite sure. Drop it in the chat. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because I don't see it on. I'm, I'm on title, and I don't, I don't see. You said the song's called Closer. No, that's the. Uh, that's what the EP is called. I the, got you, the okay. whole EP. It's just, it's short. I'll okay. drop it in the chat. 
Okay. <laughs> Just a shameless plug, artists that are listening. You see how easy the chat the, 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 we 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 be bamming in the chat. <laughs> and your music could be bamming in the chat as well. So just wanted to like plug that in real quick, you know. Because yeah, listen, because uh, listen, the chat, the chat has been bamming with music, and I've been listening to all of that shit. So shouts out to. And we will put we can put it on a playlist for this episode, so some so people can hear Come it. Come on, <laughs> motherfuckers! <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying every episode we try to put out a playlist. Mm-hmm. Niggas be missing out. Y'all, y'all shit can be on the playlist. And y'all just y'all don't want to send us no music. It's cool. It's cool. So, uh, Mr. Goodbye, you you want to give yours? I will be more than happy to share what's in my ears recently. So, since you gave two, I'm gonna give two. I'm gonna start with uh, Cat Pack. I told you guys about this in our personal conversation. Uh, they released another single called Midnight. I am so enthralled with this song. I, I, I mean, we all know, <clears throat> pardon me, we all know Amber Navaran is usually a lead vocalist for her group, any group that she's in. This one, she shares the vocal duties with one of the gentlemen. And forgive me for uh, spacing on his name. He has a great voice. The song is dope. So uh, Cat Pack, the song is called Midnight. I know their project is coming out uh, later this year. I don't remember the date. I'd have to pull it up on Bandcamp, but... Uh, definitely <laughs> check that out. Hmm? Coming out June uh, June 15th. June 15th. Thank you, Soup's Kitchen. So June 15th, we got to go to Bandcamp. You can actually pre-order it now. I'm going to try to pre-order that with the vinyl as well because um, uh, that's my new thing. I'm trying to get better at that. The second song is my not apologies. a new song. It's No, you, go ahead. June 21st. I'm sorry. June 21st, June 21st is Cat Pack uh, will be releasing their project. And the other song that I have is not necessarily new, but it is new. It came out in 2024. We've been all kind of raving about it as a collective. The song is called Is It Worth It by Ray Khalil. I cannot stop listening to this song. It's so incredible. Um, I'm pretty sure you all have heard it on any and all of our platforms repeatedly. And you will continue to. This project and this song is so fucking incredible. So I love it and I ain't stopped listening to it yet. You will continue to hear it on our platform. So that's what has me in a chokehold right now. And I will I'll, I'll piggyback on that. You know how, well, if you have Spotify, they have this on repeat playlist and that's the number one song. I think I really probably start my day with that song. It's that mm-hmm. you know, it does that for me. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of them ones. It's one of them ones. So shout out to Ray Khalil. And you're welcome to come talk to us on the Soul Curators podcast anytime. We are friendly. I know we've been cursing a lot, but we're very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for me, what's been this? So I, I got a lot of shit. So I'm sorry. But um, for me, it's been. Okay. So. I replayed the Be My Fiasco joint, the new joint. The first listen, it didn't catch me, but I put it, I played it. So the first time I listened to it, I was listening to it on my phone. It didn't really catch me the first time. So now I put it on the speakers. I put it on these big speakers and I'm like, okay, I found it. I like it. It's, that's one of, I I like that. That's, I like Be My Fiasco's new joint. It's uh, produced by Zoe and Tall Black Guy. It's called, uh, Ooh, what is it called? I just missed it. Uh, don't want to be your lover. Um, that's that just dropped yesterday. So that's that's a good one. Um, fo- fo- uh, Foggy Raw and uh, Ari Lennox. Stay a while. That, Yo, that, <laughs> that, that shit. Is, hey, that ooh. shit jam. That shit jam, boy. Ooh. God, boy, 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 boy. Ooh. And so those the singles right now. Like those is just like some of the singles that I've really been listening to, but album wise, it's been the sign, N A S C E N T. He's a producer, um, and he, I got you. I put it. I put it in the chat. Y'all just didn't listen to it, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I put it, I put it in there. But it's he's it's uh. 
is I think he produces for fifty. Um, he's he's produced for quite a few people. I think he's Grammy nominated and stuff like that. But it's it's quite a few joints on there. He got a joint with Abso. Uh, he had a joint with B, uh, B J Chicago Kid and Paul Wall. That's that joint jam. Like that is it's called spinning the block. So like that shit is that's it. Um, he's got he's got a couple of these child. He got some shit with Doug Worth, child, child is major. Um, it's really nice. Like when you when you it, it's a it's an album that you can just press play, listen to, and just keep it moving. Um, that N A S C E N T. Yep, N A S C E N T. You know, I'm in the chat on here, not on our group chat. Okay, uh, my bad. <laughs> I'll put it in the group chat. <laughs> oh, that, and then another one that. Our P got his hip to Seafood Sam. Um, his new album is Standing on Giant Shoulders. That joint got me like, I don't know. It's like it's different. Like if you if you went to the open open mic night with the you know the drum set and the and the guitar and the bass and all of that, and just the live instruments, and then somebody just spitting some shit behind it, that's seafood sam. That shit was like nice. Like I really like that. So that's one. Um I don't know. That's that's oh Blue Lab Beats. Uh Blue Lab Beats got another they they drop uh Blue Eclipse. That's really nice. It, it's a lot of music that is like top notch. So yeah. I'll be with that. Um, um. So yeah, that was that was a good alley on that uh soups with uh the the blue lab beat joint. I've been I've been killing that uh that album. Um my favorite joint on there is uh Wait a While. And just yeah. got a nice little jam to it. Sunset Sunset in LA is my is my joint as well, but the whole album just flows perfectly. Um definitely seafood Sam. Um his album is is, is great. Um his album is great. And then some hometown hero action. Um, my homie Black J. B L K J A Y. But he released an album called Flight. My favorite joint on there is In Person and Good Manners. But uh that's that's what I've been on uh heavy. And and the stuff that y'all been putting in the chat, it's the is it Flower Child that I'm um, that is am, am I saying that right? Yeah. yeah. That flower child joint is that 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 shit's hard. Um, hold on, let me pull it up. Shouts out the title. Uh, flower child and um, Grimlin. Yeah. What is this? The uh, the is it the Amores? Yes, the yeah. Amores. The Amores, yes. Yeah. So I've been I've been on that man. Um, yeah, it's been some. They good have shit, so. they they they've sung background for uh, PJ Morton for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to mention Cooley um, Hot too. Co- you put a couple, a couple the, uh, of uh, extra. Yeah, uh, I want to shout out Mr. Al P for introducing me to Ebonique. I went and listened to that Alter Ebo album, and it's yeah. really good. So shout out shout to shout her. Shout out uh, to L. Yeah. I know we're going to try to uh, sit down with her soon, so shout out to her. I really enjoyed that project as a whole. Uh, I was cleaning the house to it, and it, I was I was, I was, was gone. It was very good. Um, another song uh, that I, I think we talked about this when this album came out, Keon Harold. Uh, my favorite song on there is Forever Land featuring Laura Mova. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Laura Mova, I believe, is from Houston, so I had to shout out H-Town. And one more H Town shout out I got to give Mr. Jack Freeman the song he has out that has that I like is called Undress. Uh, I think he worked on that with uh, with uh, what's my why can't why am I spacing on his name Brian Michael Cox. Mm. So uh, Brian Michael Cox is on that so uh, it's produced that and I think his whole project. So yeah, it's, it, that's some, some more stuff that was uh, kind of got my got my ears open. And I also have been listening to El Mine. Crystal Tears, that song. And of course, when I did the liner notes, I see that D Mile is a producer. So I'm like, well, duh. No wonder I'm so into it because it's D Mile. 
Um, and I hate that I missed him. He was in Atlanta uh, Tuesday, no, last Thursday. I'm like, I can't do those during the week shows. But he <laughs> was I, I missed it. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I'm old, old, so I can't stay up too late during the middle of the week. But <laughs> yes. I, I, got no, I got one more person. I don't know if y'all hip to this person, but his name is TJ Wilkins. Um, he's a really, really dope singer. TJ Wilkins is from Cali. Um, he's got a song called Too Good. It's featuring Bubs. Um, it's Bubs and, and TJ Wilkins. It's really, it's a really, really good joint. Um, I would hope that one day we can get TJ Wilkins on here. He's got a, a really dope story. Uh, he did, he's on Broadway, uh, not on Broadway, but he's doing stage plays. Um, and he, right, I think currently right now he's playing Obama in the, in the stage play. And it's a singing stage play. He's, he plays Obama. It's really dope. Like he's a, he's great. He's a great guy. Um, he's, hey. he's got really, good, really, really good music. So, um, another album too, that we didn't mention is Buddy's album. Uh, don't forget to breathe. Um, that album had me in, it still got me in a chokehold. Like I've been listening to that. Um, I think what is it? Uh, should have known is like one of my favorites, and then like this, um, those two are like my my ones that are just like on constant repeat. Um, I mentioned Cooley High and Tume. Those like it's so much music. We ain't, we ain't been on here since Francis J. So it's been there's a lot Smart. of music that that came yeah. out. So. A lot, yeah. And then there's a lot that came yeah. out before then that you know we may have just discovered. So, right. uh, there's a guy by the name of Mar, M-A-R. He is, I want to say he lives in Jacksonville right now, but he, his album is called Where Have You Been? Well, it's like a little EP and it came out April. So, um, check him out and see if, if, if he is in Jacksonville. I want to say that he is because I saw him interact with Ebonique and someone else from Jacksonville. I, I feel like he lives there, or he might be from Jacksonville. M A R. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this, you said it's way way back when. Where have you been? Oh, where have you been? Okay. Mm-hmm. And of course, there's a <clears throat> full sorry, crate, man. full crate, and Shay Universe dropped a single "Stay" that we that we put on Soul Curator's Instagram along with the Girl Suite. That's facts. That's a nice song too. Mm-hmm. Are There's a couple are of other singles. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Soaps. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Suzanne Carroll dropped a single called Karma recently. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, shout out to Big Sue. And um, mm-hmm. also, uh, since we were talking about Misha earlier, uh, he did a uh, he did some production on a song for Tiffany Page. She uh, put out a new "Getting the Draw" song called "To To the Limit," so it's definitely all about getting the draws, and it's actually pretty good. So, shout out to both of them, <laughs> Suzanne Carroll and Tiffany Page and Misha. So yeah, and then Misha's album too is not that old. It just came out. When did it come out? In um, <laughs> April? No, early April. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, April yeah. That's a definitely a, on, on the, at the top of the list in terms of album wise for me. My favorite song on there is "Prove It." I, that has been on repeat constantly. Like this is over and over again. Like that's been. I agree. So Misha's album called Radiant. Radiant. Yes. Okay. So I, I wanted to ask y'all if y'all was hip to. Um, I think it's her name is Kenya Vaughn. K K K E N Y A V A U N. I believe it's Kenya Vaughn. It sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds very familiar. Sounds familiar. She's, um, she's got an album called Honeymoon Phase. She's got a song with music Soul Child called Summer. Is he rapping? Um, no. <laughs> 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 no, nah, no, he's not rapping. But hey. yes, that's that's it. Yeah, I've I, I've heard I heard the song with uh with mo- I mean with music so shall yes. The the album from from top to bottom the album is actually pretty good like um it's a it's a nice little vibe to it um 
So I I was wondering if y'all I because I don't think I let y'all know about that. So I was just wondering if y'all was here. I just added her to the playlist. Mm-hmm. See artists, this is how the Soul Curators podcast works. <laughs> we 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 find the music, but it's really easy if you give it to us. And yes, we tell people who listen to us and who trust us to listen to it. You can also hear us say these same things on each one of our individual platforms that you have access to 24 hours a day, seven days a week via the streaming uh, the streaming platforms that we put these shows on. So um, if you'd be interested to hear any of these shows or any of these platforms, this is the part of the show where we're going to tell you you, where you can find us collectively and individually so you can hear the music. You have to remember, and I have to say this for context sake, we all have extremely similar tastes in music, but each one of our shows are extremely different that because is, that- they all they all outline our personalities and what we gravitate towards. It just so happens that we are A-alikes and we are on the same page on so many different styles of music. And that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. so. Oh, it's on you. It's on you, lady. Oh, it's on okay. you. Okay. I thought I was just making it's sure. It's on you. It's Kristen on you. and Curates is on uh, three stations. NPN Radio. Wait a minute. Talk I your have... shit. Talk your <laughs> shit. You said how many stations? How many stations you said? Three. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> Talk no so, shit. NPN Radio on Fridays, Soul City Radio out of Las Vegas on Saturdays, and then the Sound of Dula on Sundays twice, and then Monday mornings. And also uh, Mixcloud, Soundcloud, and Apple Podcasts. Big shit over there. Where we at? Since where you at? Oh, uh, me, um, I'm not as special as you guys, but um, <laughs> uh, I am on uh, SoundCloud. I'm on Tidal. I'm on Apple. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Spotify. Um, you can get me on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Sky, the, what is it? Blue Sky, Sky Blue, one of them, uh, fan base. Uh, I'm on all social media platforms at Soup's Kitchen. Um, yeah, just reach out, share, you know, whatever. I'm there. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm here. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Al Pete, you know what it is. It's the rundown time, sir. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Mr. Al Pete.com, MPN LLC.com. Um, Mr. Al Pete on the socials, MPN Management on the socials, um, the Groove Suite. Make sure y'all uh, follow that as well. Um, download the app. Um, you can go to my uh, the link tree for slash NPM management. You can download the app on there to get all the goods um, as well as this episode. And you can, um, yeah, we got YouTube, all that stuff, man. So we kind of we kind of everywhere with it. And um, um, I have the neighborhood show that's on WJCT. Sarah is at nine o'clock. Um, that's a mixed show. Plan the plan the goods. Plan the goods that can put it, uh, that we can put on there. So um, definitely come in and rock with us. Is there anywhere in the city they can see you uh, giving up these uh, those vibes in person? I mean, every gig that I'm coming. doing. I mean, outside of me playing the 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 raunchy shit, like not the raunchy shit. Let me take that back. The the bad that ass up and the and the, the Kaya's and all that shit. Outside of that, you gonna get some this uh this. This uh good music. So that's um I'm every other Friday I'm at uh the cigar spot, Dapadis, side that by the airport. Uh Arnie mostly uh, huh? In Jacksonville, Florida. Oh yeah, Jacksonville for sure, yes. And um RB mostly the last Saturday of every month. Um and that's at Atlantis in Jacksonville, Florida. Y'all make sure y'all pull up and support my bro. Um and as for uh, the janitor of the show, I go by the name of Mr. Goodbar. You can get me MrGoodbar.com. Everything related to myself and my radio program, The Remedy, is there. You can also catch me on The Remedy every Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. on KPFT 
90.1 FM and HD2 out of Houston, Texas. You can also catch the rebroadcast of the shows on the streaming platforms Mixcloud, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, Deezer, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. Should I go on? You know, wherever you are streaming your music, I'm there. You can also catch me. Uh, we're doing a special uh, revitalization of the Paid in Full event for uh, May the 11th. If you are in the city of Houston or if you plan on visiting, pull up on us for our day party from 4 to 9 p.m. We will be celebrating the birthdays of Mr. Goodbar and DJ DJ Nimbus. Uh, uh, all, both and all May birthdays, all, <clears throat> pardon me, all Tauruses, all Geminis, y'all come party with us. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Hallelujah. Classic hip hop, <laughs> old school hip hop, everything. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be giving it up. We're going to do it house party style. It's the house party that got too big for the house. So please come up and pull up with us. And um, <laughs> who knows? I might jump on the wheels and do a little something for a few minutes too. So okay. yeah, just come pull up with us. Um, but yeah, that's where you can get me. And all the socials, uh, The Remedy Radio, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or if you just want to talk to me personally, Mr. Goodbar on everything. Um, thank you for everybody who's reached out, who's connected, and who showed us love. And of course, above all, please make sure you follow the Soul Curators on Instagram. The Soul Curators. I'm going to spell Curators for you. Q-U-R-A-T-O-R-S. Make sure you follow us. Artists. Uh, the the email address for the Soul Curators podcast is the T H E Soul S O U L Curators Q U R A T O R S at gmail dot com. Please send us your music. Please send us your EPKs. That one email will get you, like we said earlier, to six or seven different platforms in four or five different areas. So it's a one stop shop. And, and make sure you subscribe. S- subscribe to our the MPN YouTube channel. Subscribe on anywhere that you get your uh, podcasts. And then also leave us a comment and tell us how much you like us. Or don't like soups. No, I'm just... <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm just it was just out there. I had to. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was a straight right there, boy. We're not going to talk about our shirts. You throwing shots. I, I got a name I need to take off of this shirt now. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, kick it off. Kick it off, suit. You got to go last on the shirt, suit. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, this, my shirt is um, in. I mean, okay. My kids are taking their calculus exam next week so it says it's not a wizard i'm a calculus i'm not a wizard but i'm a calculus teacher that's and that's i don't know what it says but it says something y'all i'm sorry i'm delicious <laughs> like it said that's close <laughs> enough calculus. yes it says calculus on it and I'm, if you hear, hear me doing a whole bunch of stuff i'm actually packing goodie bags for my students before they take the exam because the seniors last day is this is friday so that's what's up. Salute. Oh, That's nice what's teacher. up. Salute. I wish my teacher was, my teacher was like you. Miss <laughs> McGeorge was not with the shits. <laughs> oh, I don't be either, but they but they, you know. Yeah, I, well, you know, you know. Mr. <laughs> Al Pete, looking for yo, Mr. Al Pete, you this humble shit you're doing is crazy, bro. I what saw the mean? model, the model set you did, the model set you did. With the whole the the ill ass fit with the dope ass Adidas on and shit, yo, that shit was so fucking fly, my nigga. They're like, yo, you looked amazing, bro. That what shit was, was so hard. Was it when I was performing at uh performing on stage? That too, but you did like a model shoot or something that I saw on your socials, and I was like, damn, that when nigga you probably, fresh. When you, won, when you won the award. Yeah, salute to you winning that award too. I, I, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, listen, I. If Adidas don't give you a, uh, <laughs> My, that's why. I, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I be trying out over here, man. I, listen, I, them emails be flying, so I just, you know, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I'm, I'm praying for that day to come. But I appreciate y'all, you know, for the for the uh, blessings on the on that on everything. I be trying to look fly, man, while I'm working, but that work be taking over yeah. me sometimes. And I'm like, let me just put on this, uh, put on some. 
stay to the queue and 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 keep it moving. So, so that's not a that's Adidas you got on right now, right? Well, the shirt right here, no. Yes, sir. Okay. No, no, no. This is uh, this is uh, let me see what up. So this is a 904 pop up. 904 pop up. Um, it's a uh, it's a brand that's here. Um, it's a shirt brand called 80103 Clothing. So they they do every third every third Sunday they do a 904 pop up and it's at the beach and they have all vendors and all that stuff. So he he made the shirts. So um, I want to support on that. But it's a real dope uh, event. And I DJed there last month. So I'll be there this month as well. They made me the, uh, what is it called? The the, 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 the DJ thing. What's, I forgot what it's called. The house the DJ. Oh. Yo. So, uh, yeah, going forward, I'll be the house DJ for the 904 or whatever. So I want to represent with the, with the support, the local shirt today. Salute to them. Salute to that. Salute to that entity. Um, yeah. I am rocking something that is very sentimental to me. Um, I say, hey, I, I saw, I saw a, that earlier, and I was like, "Yeah, it'll be business." Yes, sir. Uh, this is the little brother hoodie that I purchased when I first got a chance to meet my family in person at the Maiden Dorm uh, uh, block party um, by little brother. And I purchased this when we got there. I got a chance to uh, shake hands with uh, Sean Don, the MC, who sold it to me. Um, got you know, we had to get some merch while we was out there. That was a very special day for me. So Yo, uh, I always that wear this. It always so comfortable, me. man. I was about very to say that sweatshirt is so comfortable. <laughs> it's extremely comfortable. It's a it's a hug, man. It feels like a hug, man. And I got a lot of compliments on it today when I wore it to work. So. Yeah, this is and it you know it's it's dope. It looks dope. It's simple, but it's it's classy. But it got the logo on there, and it's just it's a it's a it's a timepiece for a very mem- memorable moment for me. So it's very special. You know, it's special when I watch it different. You know, I gotta watch it in the good dark detergent. You know what I'm saying? And then I gotta hang it to air dry. I can't go in the wa- in the dryer. You know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. watch hey, it different. So I'm, lasts, I'm, 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 yeah. hey man, I'm bougie dog. I that shit. My shit went to the cleaners. <laughs> this one might go. This one, I gotta make a run anyway. This one might go to the cleaners. Yeah, I'm like, I want Part this sweatshirt to last. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, listen, grand finale, grand finale, grand finale. Right. Y'all ain't ready for this shit. All right, so I think I gotta stand up. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta stand up. Right. Here we go. Here we that go. shit hard as fuck. <laughs> Uh, curator, suit, the remedy, the city curator, um, my, it's my favorite shirt right now. Uh, so shout out to you guys. Uh, I wanted to surprise y'all with this, but I couldn't hold the surprise. I had to let y'all know ahead of time. But, you know, this is this is a. I might have to take a name off now, but this is a. You know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, that shit hard as fuck, man. I, I that that really was a pleasant surprise to see. I really love it. I can't wait till I get me one. That's hard. That shit hard, yeah, that, man. Yeah, I, I can't wait to get that shit either, man. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, yeah. We appreciate Shout you, brother, for that. Five. Shout out to Top Five Clothing. They they're a great brand. They they've been doing this thing. Uh, y'all can go in there and make your own thing, whatever you want to make it. You know, so shout out to them. Hopefully, they could be our sponsor one day. Like, hopefully, they can you know put us together and do something for yeah. us. You know, shout out to them. We almost in the door. We almost in the door. You modeling for them too? So you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> Listen, I have put it in my notes that this would be the shirt promo. Yeah, that's hard. That's super hard. <laughs> Well, listen, for everybody who has tuned in to this episode of the Soul Curators Podcast, we thank you for spending some time with us. We thank you for allowing us a safe space to share our feelings on what we feel about this music that we love to death and that we live for. And we thank you for loving on us. Uh, please make sure you share this podcast with your friends, your loved ones, or anybody else you know who loves music, who feels like you do or how we do about music and these artists. Please share it. Like, like Miss Christina Turace instructed you to do, like and uh, just stay connected with us collectively and individually. And we appreciate everybody who's t- giving us time. We appreciate you. So uh, until next time, wish you peace and love. Thank y'all for tuning in. This is Soul Curators, and we out. Peace. Bye.
Thank you for tuning in to the Soul Curators Podcast, powered by the MPN Network. You can check us out on all streaming platforms where podcasts are available.